how would you handle Israel different from Biden? Well, first, let, let me go backwards first, because I think it's important. You know, this this cycle of violence has been occurring literally since I was born. And when I was born, Joe Biden was essentially a U.S. senator. I was three years old when he went to Washington. You know, the cycle of violence has been ongoing. The United States, we came close under the Clinton administration, of course. And and Jimmy Carter, of course, made peace um, you know, with, with Jordan and also Egypt. But since then, for the most part, the United States has been very unsuccessful uh, in addressing one of the most significant challenges facing the world. Uh, and I'm sick of the cycle. Uh, I am sick of the terrorism. I'm sick of the settlement policy. I believe that the uh, Palestinian Authority is corrupt. Hamas is a terrorist organization. And Benjamin Netanyahu, all three of those leaders uh, or organizations have got to go. This is the truth. And I think it's time for the entire world, friends and foes, to work together to impose peace. And what I mean by imposition of peace, it is time for a Palestinian state. I'm a Jewish man. I have great affection for Israel uh, and its right to exist in the Jewish people, you can imagine. But I also recognize if it is indeed um, the prerogative of those who care about Israel to protect it, that we need to all work towards a Palestinian state. The self-determination, safety, security, and opportunity. We need a 21st century Marshall Plan in which nations of the world come together, establish a state, ensure security for both nations, and make requisite investments in civil society uh, and economy. Uh, if we don't try this, we are not just going to fail in the region. It is a risk to the entire globe. And we're getting to a point where people will be able to carry nuclear weapons in backpacks into any city in this world. And if we don't act now and invest in peace uh, and reduce despair and oppression all around the world, we are going to be in big trouble. And I do not see this president, and I certainly don't see President Trump, willing uh, to present the courage of conviction to actually pursue this. And I do wish to create a Palestinian state. I think that is the only way forward. I care just as much about Palestinian kids and families and people as I do about Israelis and Jewish people, because we're all humans. And I'm sick and nauseated and appalled by what I see happening time and time again. So Biden subverted Congress to send more weapons to Israel recently. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, I have to ask you, Bernie Sanders came out the other day and basically said, no more yeah. funding. This is totally gross and disproportionate a response and massive numbers of innocent civilians are being killed daily. And Bernie early on was one of the guys saying, I don't want a full ceasefire. But now even mm -hmm. he's come to the position, we got to stop arming this. We see what's happening. We have eyes. We can see the video. We can see the pictures. Right. So are you in that place now as well where uh, obviously I'm sure you agree that Biden shouldn't have subverted Congress. Yeah. But are you also at the point where it's like, hey, man, not a penny yeah. more because we see what's going on? Yeah. So as, as for congressional consent, yes, I do believe Congress should consent to such arms transfers. I mean, that's why we have a United States Congress. And the fact of the matter is. Congress has to reassert itself. That's a whole other conversation I'd love to have with you at some point, having been on the inside. It's appalling how much happens without consent uh, or only the consent of a handful, uh, which defeats democracy. As for the circumstance itself, look, two things can be true at once. Hamas has to be eliminated. Uh, they do not, they're the enemy of not just Israelis, they're the enemy of Palestinians. And it is the truth. Palestinians want the same thing that every one of us want in the world, which is security and possibility food on the table, you know, economic potential, it's not that difficult. But Hamas is not looking for peace. And Benjamin Netanyahu is not looking for peace. So two things can be true at once. Hamas has to be eliminated. On the other hand, Netanyahu and his government right now appear to have no incentive to end this war. And that's a reality. He's facing corruption charges. His, only, his standing only increases when there's times of battle. Uh, and these are truths. So I do think the United States should ensure two things, that Hamas is defeated, that Israel is protected, and that we do not support the indiscriminate uh, killing of human beings, period. So yes, Congress should be playing a role, and that's why we have Congress, and you can see what's going on. But how do you eliminate Hamas? Because this is a talking point I hear all mm -hmm. the time, and it seems to be like a justification for the perpetual bombardment. Right now, we see the numbers, according to Euromedmonitor, the human rights group, it's 92% innocent civilians who have mm -hmm. been killed. How do you, quote unquote, get rid of Hamas? It seems like an impossible standard in the same way that George W. Bush waged a war on terror. It's like you're never just going to defeat terror, and there's always going to be Palestinian hardliners and militants. So sure. how do you defeat Hamas? It seems like an impossible standard. 
Well, you get, you know, you, you have to target, uh, you know, we, by the way, the United States is still, we have an AUMF authorization for the use of military force against Al Qaeda and ISIS right now. I think Hamas should be added to that because uh, they are a terrorist organization currently holding eight Americans hostage. Let's start with that for one moment. Eight Americans have been held hostage for almost three months in Gaza. It should be first and foremost priority of the United States president and our entire country to ensure their release or extract them if necessary. So I want to remind you that Hamas is holding Americans hostage, and we should not accept that. Yes, is it hard to do, eliminate them? Absolutely. But if the world unites behind the elimination of terror, there are a lot of ways to do so, and I'm afraid that we are we can be very effective when we work together. We're not very effective when we do it alone. It has to be an all-hands-on-deck approach. But at the end of the day, the real way to eliminate Hamas is to ensure that Palestinians have a future. And in the absence of a principled government representing Palestinians who are seeking peace, who are seeking prosperity, and who are seeking protection, we are going to see militant organizations rise in, in every country in the world if people are oppressed. Right. So. This is a chicken and the egg, I understand that. But I believe that the investment in people and infrastructure, when people have something to protect, they act in defensive manners. When people have nothing to lose, when hopelessness reigns, it doesn't matter if it's Gary, Indiana, or Gaza, the Gaza Strip, it is the same human beings and the same human condition. People will not live under oppression, and I understand that. And I'm a Jewish man who loves Israel. These are truths. Uh, and I'm trying to tell everybody who's watching and listening right now that we got to rise above the conflict and invest in humanity. And the way to eliminate Hamas is to show there's a better way. But right now, most Palestinians don't see a better way because it is absent. That's why I think it's time to impose the possibility of peace. But that is going to take an all hands on deck international effort, including China, by the way, which I think could be an extraordinary opportunity to reset our relationship with China to start investing as partners in peace all around the world, end the war in Ukraine, um, have a Palestinian state created with security in the Middle East, the Gulf states and MBS have to be participants. I believe it's time to change our entire approach because it is not working the status quo. It's simply not working. And I just wanna say one more thing about Israel because I think it's important that people know this. You know, when the first boats of refugees left uh, Europe at the beginning of the Holocaust and came to the United States, they were turned away right? They were turned away. There are now 200 or so Christian majority nations in the world, about 140 Muslim majority nations in the world. And there's just one Jewish majority nation in the world established after 6 million Jewish people were killed just for their religion. And Israel needs to exist. Uh, and progressives in America supported Israel for generations under that belief that there needs to be a singular, at least, Jewish majority state as a place of refuge for the Jewish diaspora, because there will be another Holocaust, sadly, or another pogrom. We're seeing evidence of that uh, anti-Semitism rise again. So I would just ask people to have hearts open for Palestinians who have suffered and also the Jewish people who have suffered through thousands of years of horrifying history. Uh, there's a lot of oppression in the world. We have a lot of it here in America. But I just want to be mindful of the realities and let's work on the solutions rather than the condemnations. And that means it's time for new leadership like I said, in the West Bank, in Gaza, and in the West Wing, period. Congressman, do you believe that Israel has committed war crimes, and would you be committed to holding the perpetrators of those war crimes accountable? Were you president? I believe I believe any perpetrator of a war crime, if demonstrated uh, in the and in a court, uh, international court, of course, doesn't matter doesn't matter one's religion, doesn't matter one's nationality, doesn't matter one's political party uh, or one's perspective. I mean. And this goes back to the 14th Amendment. I understand, you know, the law is the law. Uh, I also understand there are dangers uh, if the law is not applied uh, consistently uh, and uh, literally religiously. And as it relates to war crimes, I'm afraid our world tolerates way too much destruction uh, and invests way too little in peace. But the answer is, of course, of course, I'd and be a do hypocrite. You do you see evidence of that with regards to Israel, though? I mean, we have uh, Washington Post confirming white phosphorus dropped on civilians in a manner inconsistent with international law in Lebanon. We have the complete siege, which was announced at mm -hmm. the uh, beginning of Israel's assault on Gaza. We have what the president himself has described as indiscriminate bombing, a level of civilian death, you know, somewhere around 80 percent of those killed. Uh, we have hospitals, schools, civilian infrastructure, agricultural lands all targeted. 
Mm -hmm. Do those acts, in your opinion, constitute war crimes? Well, war, first of all, war crimes are war crimes. Of co any targeting of innocents or any failure to protect them, of course. But, but Crystal, we, you know, October 7th, Hamas has to be held. Let's start with Hamas for a second, October 7th. By the way, we can, there can be a long discussion about the roots of this conflict, and I do believe the Netanyahu settlement policy, of course. It's horrifyingly provocative. I've told that to his face, by the way. But as it results, as it relates to what you just asked me, mm -hmm. Hamas needs to be held accountable. Talk about okay. indiscriminate. So, talk, no, but let me let me just finish. You asked the sure. question. Let, let's start with Hamas. What they did okay. to women, the rapes, the videos. I, I don't know if you've seen that are most horrifying videos of the direct targeting of innocent civilians I've ever seen. It's repulsive. Okay, that is a horrifying crime against humanity. If Netanyahu is demonstrated in a court of law that Netanyahu knowingly targeted civilians or took no steps to prevent civilian loss of life? What? Of course. But of here's, course. you know, I don't want to nitpick, but here's my issue with what you just said. The language you use with regard to Hamas is appropriately unequivocal. You talk about the, you know, the crimes that they committed, the horrors that mm -hmm. they committed. You don't say if they did, if it's proven in a court of law, but suddenly when it comes to Israel, it's well, sure, if they did it, but you're not committing to what we see in the horrors post-October 7th. I mean, the videos are available okay. for everyone to see. We know the civilian death toll. 12,000 so children as of right now. I am a hundred and million percent on board with Hamas being held accountable for the atrocities that they committed. But there seems to be such a reluctance to have the same moral clarity when mm -hmm. it comes to the Israeli government, which at this point has a higher civilian death rate than even the terrorist of Hamas. Mm -hmm. Look, I hear you, and I'm not, this is, I think it's exactly, I think we're saying the same thing. When you target innocent human beings, you should be held accountable. I think we have different perspectives, perhaps because, look, and I'm a, I'm a Jewish person um, whose people have been subject to some of the most horrific abuses of humanity in history. And I, I'm not asking you to understand how I feel because you can't walk in my shoes. I've not walked in yours, and I certainly haven't walked in the shoes of Palestinians. But I can speak for the Jewish people who are simply trying to defend themselves. Uh, and I understand. You know, the difference is I've seen the video of individual Hamas fighters, you know, brutally, brutally targeting and attacking individuals in Israel. Um, what I'm getting at here is we don't have the I mean, yes, have I seen the evidence of killing? Yes, it's atrocious. I'm appalled. I'm a proud Jewish man who supports Israel, who's appalled by the loss of life of Palestinians. I want to end it today. I want to end this nonsense and establish a state. But like I said, I don't know what went on in the rooms. I don't know specifically who targeted and who made the approvals to drop bombs in certain places. I'm not saying that I disagree if the fact is the evidence indicates the same. I just haven't seen video of it like I have with I mean, the, the really? Video is you available. haven't seen video of it? It's all no, over no, the I've place. Seen, no, Watch I've my show. Guys, I've seen the video of the loss of life. I'm talking about the perpetrators, you guys. This is different. The perpetrators. Okay. I'm I'm not making I'm making it really clear. I'm making it really clear. I'm no fan of Benjamin Netanyahu. I think he's a big part of this problem. I'm simply pointing out also, because look at this is part of the problem. You know, I, I don't understand why there isn't also a conversation about the security of Israel, period, because it's been attacked for its entire life. I think that's, that's the only life. conversation people mm -hmm. are having, certainly in U.S. media and among U.S. politicians. Yeah. But to, to your point, though, Congressman, the ultimate enemy of Hamas and the ultimate enemy of extremists in Israel mm -hmm. is peace. It's peace. There is no military yeah. solution to this conflict. No, the ultimate not. guarantee of security for Palestinians and Israelis alike is peace. And so there seems to be you acknowledge that, but then there's other language about, well, Israel's just trying to defend itself. And why is there a conversation about Israeli security? Well, actually, that is the conversation that we're trying to have is about both Israeli security and Palestinian security, you know, specifically on, you know, that you, you haven't seen the evidence with regard to Israel that you've seen with regard to Hamas. You know, the government, Yoav Gallant, the defense minister at the beginning of this, he announced mm -hmm. complete siege, blocking food water, medicine, fuel, and said, quote, we are fighting human animals and they need to be treated as such. You have the UN reporting that half, half of Gazans are starving. 90% mm -hmm. of the population, entire population, routinely goes entire days without eating. 
Mm -hmm. Okay, this isn't me. This is the UN. This is what the government announced. Is that complete siege and denial of the basic conditions of life? Is that a war crime? I, I'm so just just listening to what you just shared, Crystal. Is it makes my heart break and it's sickening and it's wrong and I don't want to see humans suffering. I'm I'm trying to make this really really clear. I'm sick of it. And I do believe people who are responsible for war crimes should be prosecuted, period. But are they responsible and, and, for war and crimes? And the fact of the matter is, you know, and but I, and look, I, all I'm trying to get to with both of you right now is two things can be true at once. You know, Hamas is a horrific terrorist organization that is committed to the destruction of the Jewish people. And I'm not going to continue to tolerate people who will not simply acknowledge that. That is true. And that's I will the easiest acknowledge, acknowledgement in the world, though. I think the I question also, for you is, is Netanyahu I, a terrorist? Is Netanyahu a terrorist? I have to, I've sat with Benjamin Netanyahu twice this year. I've made it very clear how I feel. He is responsible for the lack of security and I believe for a lot of the mess in which this entire region now finds itself in right now. His is he a terrorist? Policy, his right wing government. I'm not going to call him. Guys, you're going to you push should. me in directions. Is he a terrorist? No, I don't think he's a terrorist. I think he is a misguided, go. ineffective, and increasingly uh, dangerous leader for Israel. Because I think Israel's security is at risk because of ben Benjamin Netanyahu. Not everybody, look at we guys, we can go into this for a long, long time. And all I'm saying is I think two things are true. I think you're saying only one thing's true. And I'm just being honest. Well, Wait, you're not you listening. Here, listen, not ready? I'll say it very clearly. Hamas is a terrorist organization. The leaders of Hamas should be brought to the International Criminal Court, found guilty, and put in prison forever. I also believe that of Ben Gavir and Smotrich mm -hmm. and Netanyahu. Do you? I think those three men you just referenced are a big part of the problem. And I think should also, if there's, ev I, yeah, I do believe if there's evidence suggesting the same thing that you just shared about them, absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. Because what I'm seeing in the destruction of human beings is repulsive, period. I also just want to make it clear, there should be two nations that live side by side with peace and prosperity. And I hope there are Jews living in a Palestinian state, just like Palestinians are living in a Jewish state that both people are treated with respect and decency and integrity and equity, period. Period. And I so, hear you. I'm I saying go the back same thing. To, I want to go back to Kyle's original question, which is Biden has offered Israel no red lines, unconditional support, mm -hmm. bypassed normal procedures both within the State Department and circumvented Congress to ship weapons as, as rapidly as he possibly can. Um, yes, occasionally we get some pearl clutching about we're worried about what's going on, but the actions the actions have been consistently supportive of whatever Israel wants to do. Would you be different from that? What are the decision points? How would you have handled this conflict from the beginning? I believe Israel is at its best when it eliminates individuals um, in the targeted approaches. By the way, as you both probably know, after the Holocaust, Israel did not rest for literally 50 years pursuing every single Nazi around the world they could identify one at a time and bringing justice to them. I do believe that's the best approach with Hamas. As we've seen already in the last couple of days, there's been some evidence of them doing just that. The indiscriminate loss of human life is appalling. I don't care your religion, your, your perspective, your politics, it's appalling and wrong. And I would absolutely have done a lot more to limit that or at least draw red lines. By the way, we've drawn red lines in the past in Syria, of course, when Joe Biden was you know, uh, vice president. Mm -hmm. walk right over those, we'll let Putin walk right into Crimea. And we're not really good with the red line approach, sadly. But yes, the answer is yes. Yes, we have to, by the way, do that all over the world. And that's how, that's part of my proposition for investing in peace and preventing this nonsense. And I would have been a lot more aggressive with Israel relative to the settlement policy for years. Who in their right mind would not have predicted at some point this would happen? You know? So the answer to your question on that is absolutely. Um, South Africa has initiated proceedings against Israel, accusing them of genocide at the International Court of Justice. Um, first of all, do you find those claims to have merit? And second of all, if you were president and the ICJ found Israel guilty of genocide, would you support that finding? Well, you know, Crystal, genocide, I'm going to return to the genocide is what Hitler did to the Jewish people specifically, very clearly targeted the elimination of an entire people. That's genocide. Hamas is committed to the destruction of the Jewish people in Israel, shoving people into the sea. That is, to me, the roots of genocide. 
And, and but do I have great faith in the international courts right now in any of these circumstances? I do not. But it does not change my perspective that, like I just said, anybody who commits crimes against humanity should be prosecuted and held accountable, period. And so if we do, do you not... find do you find that their claims have merit? They uh, put in something like an 84 page report that details conditions on the ground, including, as I've mentioned, the denial of, you know, the basic conditions yeah. of life through the complete siege, the indiscriminate bombing. They also have six pages of comments from Israeli politicians and military leaders, including up to and including Benjamin Netanyahu. Do you find any of those claims to have merit? And would you uphold a finding of guilt were it to be issued and you were president? Look, okay. as I said earlier, uh, if evidence indicates that Benjamin Netanyahu initiated uh, this knowing about the loss of indiscrim or indiscriminate loss of life, uh, that is one thing. But it, are, does, is Israel committed to genocide? No, they're not. And any, any contention uh, like that, I think, is really appalling because, no, uh, Israel is not committed to eliminating the Palestinian people or Muslim people. No, they're not. Now, Hamas is committed to eliminating Jewish people. That's true. I don't, I, I don't know how else to portray it. No, I don't think this is a genocide. I think, it is a, I think it is a poorly executed plan. I think it is resulting in horrifying indiscriminate loss of life that must be stopped, never to happen again. And those who've been perpetuating it should be held accountable based on the law, period. On, like we can move said, on. Um, that we can Hamas, move on. That means, that means Hamas and Israel. And I, all I'm looking, guys, all I'm looking for is this. I just want to make this case. You know, I, and it's, I know I don't look like someone whose community is really suffering too right now. I know I don't look like someone who, you know, needs any help or support or is facing any kind of threat whatsoever. You know, I just look like a white privileged man. I know that. I would just ask that both of you and people watching have some empathy for a group of people right now around the world who have been suffering for generations, who are scared out of their wits right now for their children too, and who have great empathy for Palestinian people like me. And I just wish progressives can unite about, around something much more important than which side you're on, which is the side of humanity. And I understand the appalling nature of this whole thing. I would just ask that you understand how the ignorance of how another people are suffering who look like me that don't look like we need any help is actually a really big issue. And I would suffering, ask you to think about that. Suffering doesn't justify atrocity. Yeah, and let's be clear, North Gaza, hey, well, North Crystal, Gaza has not, been wiped not, off the map, what Congressman. What, but North, the anti, North the Gaza is gone. The that is resulting from the, the anti-Semitism that is resulting from this is really dangerous and really horrifying for people. And I can tell you don't totally understand that. I'm not asking to do anything else other than to listen to what I just said and understand that there are a lot of people suffering. And no, it's not the same thing. No, no more than the Jews that were brutalized and killed and raped by Hamas fighters, any more than the indiscriminate loss of life in Gaza. They're both horrifying, and it has to end. But please, please understand you know, the fear in other communities that don't maybe seem like it's existing, and that's how a lot of Jewish people are feeling right now. And I'm afraid, without a little bit of that empathy, you're going to see a flight of Jewish progressives from the Democratic Party that's going to make solving these problems even more difficult. I'm just Congressman, asking, I'm just asking for some let me empathy. interject. That's all. Let me interject. My primary yeah. concern at the moment is what I view as an ongoing genocide in Gaza. Okay. So we have. I'm just going to give you the numbers here. This is from Euromed Monitor, the Human Rights Group. We have 30,676 Palestinians who have been killed. 12,040 of them are children. 6,103 of them are women. Of the 30,676 Palestinians killed, 28,201 of them are civilians. We have 58,960 people injured. There's been 105 journalists who've been killed. Many of them, there's tremendous evidence that they've been targeted on purpose. Of the 2.3 million residents of Gaza, 1.935 million of them are displaced. There's 67,946 homes that have been completely destroyed. We have 201 mosques that have been bombed, three churches that have been bombed, 169 healthcare facilities that have been bombed, 198 heritage sites that have been bombed. What we're looking at here, I think it's a genocide. I think South Africa is right. Clearly you disagree with that, but the crocodile tears I find a little insulting. This idea that we should care more about feelings of some people as a, a whole group of people is getting wiped off the map. North Gaza is gone. It doesn't exist anymore. It's rubble. 
and Ben Gavir and Smotris have announced a plan of ethnic cleansing. Why should that not be the main focus and the main concern, especially when it's my money and our weapons that are being used for it? Mm -hmm. Well, I don't know what, you know, Kyle, first of all, it accused me of having crocodile tears. You know, come on. I mean, come on. Have you not heard me say a thousand times on this interview so far that I have great empathy and I feel the same way about the loss of innocent human life? And I can't hear I, I've not heard you say one thing empathetic. I've not heard you say one thing empathetic towards a country and people that have been prosecuted, persecuted, oppressed, and killed in mass for generations. The only reason my family is an American family, Kyle, is because they escaped pogroms in Europe. Israel is also trying to protect itself. You never talk about it. You know, I, I don't think they're trying to protect themselves. I think they're trying to wipe uh, out Palestinians. That's what the evidence suggests. Well, I think, okay, then look at, I'm trying to be empathetic. You don't have empathy for the Jewish people, it appears, or for the Israeli state. And I understand that's such that's a cheap trick. You're basically saying I I'm an anti-Semite because I'm critical of what's happening in Gaza. I'm not, Do you I think I'm an anti-Semite, Congressman? I didn't, Kyle, I did not use that term. What I'm saying is I'm empathizing with You're very clearly implying it. You're, you're saying I have crocodile tears. I'm trying to tell you that right now it is a disaster in the Middle East. Both people have been suffering for generations, and what I'm seeing in Gaza is appalling, period. It's disgusting. If I were president, I would handle this quite differently. I would not allow tens of thousands of people to be killed, and frankly, I would not have allowed Israelis to be suffering like they have for generations. And I know none of us were alive during the Holocaust, but my goodness, you have no empathy for what it is like to be a Jewish person, none. And I'm telling you I would you be that, the first period. one on the front period. lines trying to period. protect Jews during the Holocaust, and that's how I feel like I am right I now, trying to protect the Palestinians have, during the atrocity against them. That. That that's history my position. Congressman, do you think it's understandable? Do you think it's understandable? Do you think I don't live in 1940. Do you think it's <laughs> I live understandable right now. to prioritize <laughs> an ongoing time. genocide? Do you think it's understandable? Do you think it requires you to be an anti-Semite? to say that the no, most important no. foreign policy issue in the world right now is the ongoing starvation and genocide of an entire people and planned ethnic cleansing. It's not, no, that ethnic cleansing and the genocide was against Jewish people during the Holocaust in the 1940s, that is true. Israel is not committing a genocide trying to eliminate an entire people. All right, they're let me let me ask you. They're trying to eliminate, they're trying to eliminate a terrorist organization that just killed 1,200 people in the most brutal fashion They're very bad at and it. I think it's they sickening. actually have increased support for mm -hmm. Hamas, and they have massacred vastly more civilians than they have even by their own estimates of Hamas fighters. But I want to ask one more question on this. Uh, you know, I think this Do all ends take... up. I have empathy for two types. I, I have empathy for both peoples, and it appears that right now all you want to talk about is the empathy for one, and I understand that's your position. The and one's getting bombed. One that's being massacred <laughs> by the thousands on a daily basis. Okay, what about the last thousand, question. What about, question. Thousand, what about the thousand Israelis that were brutally we attacked? Have, we we have covered October 7th a thousand no, times, we of course. We covered it extensively. We haven't talked about it once. Congressman, who is being killed right now? Whose government is complicit in those killings right now? Okay, now, right I can't now, call. I can't call my local Hamas representative and tell him to cut it out. But I can talk to my member of Congress. I can talk to people who are running for president, like you, and the president of the United States, who are sending our tax dollars to bomb babies. So the last question I have for you, and then we can move on potentially, is: Do you take Ben Gavir, Smotrich? and Netanyahu at their word that their goal, their end goal of this operation is to, quote, thin out the population of Gaza to push a, quote, voluntary migration, which, of course, is not voluntary when your house has been bombed and your children are being starved. Um, this was just in Haaretz, I believe, yesterday. Netanyahu, considering scenario of surrender and deportation of Gaza residents, they're talking to countries as far afield as Congo to try to get them to accept the Palestinian refugees who are being pushed out of their homes. Do you accept their words that their end goal here is a complete ethnic cleansing of the Gaza Strip of Palestinians? I, I don't know what to make of their words. I will tell you this, Crystal. The three men you just referenced, I think, are bad people, period. I'm going to leave it at that, period. And they're a big part of the problem for Israel and Israel's security and Israel's future. And I hope Israelis replace them because it is the only democratic nation in the entire region. Thank goodness Israelis will have that chance to do so, and hopefully soon, period. And they should be held accountable, as I said earlier, period. 
Guys, if you like what you see, sign up below, link below on Substack, $5 a month gets you the full video and the full video of every interview and it gets it to you a day early. You could also sign up on Substack for free and you'll get the full audio podcast version which comes out a day later delivered uh, right to your email. Uh, I've, we've never had any conversation with any advertiser for the show. It's all funded through you guys. Uh, so please consider supporting and a massive, massive thank you. And we love you to people who do already support. So remember, link below Substack to check out the entire thing. You're only seeing a little piece of it here.